Luke chapter 24. Thinking, oh, he's preaching on the resurrection again, didn't we? Haven't we been doing that? And uh, I don't think we can preach on the resurrection enough. But what I want to do is start a series on the other disciples. The other disciples. Uh, many times we think of the disciples and we think of the twelve. But uh, there were the 12 that, uh, that, that were called, and uh, one of them was a devil, one of them was Judas. Uh, but there were other disciples as well. So we're going to look at some of the ones that are named as the other disciples. Uh, some of the other people that were involved in the Lord's church uh, early on and, and are included in the Bible. And uh, so we're going to read, and, and uh, I was hesitant to include this just because um, I've preached on this text a few times. Um, and although we cannot exhaust the scripture, sometimes people will say, well, he's preaching on that same text again. Is that all he knows? And uh, I don't even know this much, by the way. Um, but with the Lord's help, we'll preach the opus of Cleopas. The opus of Cleopas. We're going to start in Luke chapter 24 and read verses 13 through 36. It says, um, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were a holding. In other words, God withheld. They were able to see that it was Jesus, that they should not know him. He said unto them, What manner of communication are these that, or, or that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in uh, Jerusalem, and hast not known? the things which are come to pass there in these days. And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and in word before God, and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that he had been he that should be should have redeemed Israel. Beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yes, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying, We have also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women and said, But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh into the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And as it came to pass, he sat at meat with them, and he took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave it to him. 
And their eyes were opened, and they knew him and vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together, and to them that were with them, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And as they told these things were done in this way, how he was known to them in breaking bread. And while they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the resurrected Savior. We thank you for the promise of each day. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you that you are still saving men, women, boys, and girls. And in our, our prayer today is as you are, uh, uh, your word is preached and is we point to you, we point to your son that people will hear the gospel, that people will obey the gospel, people will believe in Jesus Christ. Lord, use us at this time. Help us to be a blessing. Be well pleased with all that we do, all that we say. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name, that you might receive the glory. Amen. Amen. As I said, I am preaching today the opus of Cleopas. Now, uh, we said we were preaching on other disciples other than the, the 12. Uh, we did a series a few years ago on the 12 disciples, and uh, I don't know that we covered all of them, but we covered most of them. But we're going to look at these. Now, Cleopas, it, it gives by name. There were two disciples that were walking uh, toward Emmaus, and the presumption is uh, apparently uh, they were going home. They'd been in Jerusalem. They'd heard about the things that were going on. And by the way, uh, I don't know about you, but oftentimes in the past as I've thought about the events concerning the resurrection, I kind of felt like this was almost a, a secret thing that happened, that just the, uh, the close disciples had heard about it, the men that would be the apostles, the women that had come to the tomb, the, uh, uh, the Jewish leaders, but it wasn't really known abroad. But as I've been reading this and as I've studied this, that they were shocked that Jesus had not heard of the things that were going on. So apparently this thing was fairly well known. The word had spread throughout Jerusalem that the, that the tomb was empty, the body was not there, and that there were claims that Jesus had risen, the Jewish leaders had bribed the guards to say, you know, to make up a story. Actually, they made up a story and gave it to the guards and say, tell this and we'll make sure nothing happens to you as you say that the disciples came when you were asleep and stole the body. And they've come up with all sorts of reasons uh, and, and excuses why Jesus had not risen. People who knew the truth and you would think that all of Jerusalem, if they had all heard and, and, and realized what had gone, knowing the teachings of Jesus as he walked among them, dwelt among them, taught among them, uh, uh, knowing uh, and many witnessing the crucifixion of Jesus and knowing that he was put to death, uh, knowing that he was put in this grave, and now his body was gone. The stone had been moved away. It was apparently fairly common knowledge there in Jerusalem. And yet, how relatively few people actually believed. I keep thinking about a statement that I heard that uh, uh, Lee Strobel had made, and he's a, uh, um, a man who started out as an atheist. He was a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, and he worked for, I believe it was the Chicago Tribune, one of the more powerful papers in the country, uh, back when newspapers were, were something that, that people read. And uh, um, he was challenged to investigate the claims of the resurrection. And as he investigated and looked into the evidence and didn't just look into his own personal beliefs and looked at it objectively and got all the information, he came to the conclusion the resurrection has to be true. And if it is true, 
Why am I not a believer in Jesus Christ? Why am I not a follower of Jesus Christ? And he has since written books. I'm currently reading one of his books right now, but I, I, I saw a video of a statement he made. He said, the evidence is all there. The only reason that you do not believe the evidence is you choose not to believe the evidence. It's all there. There is nothing more evident and factual than the life, the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even if you didn't have a Bible and you looked at all the other sources, the, the, the evidence is all there that it actually happened. So the people of Jerusalem knew. As we can see, many of the disciples were confused. As a matter of fact, as we read this, these early accounts, the only one that we really see that believed, and the Bible says believed, was John. The rest were all trying to figure out what was going on. But John apparently believed that Jesus Christ had risen as the angels had said. They didn't believe the testimony of the women. They didn't believe the testimony of the angels. They didn't believe the testimony of Peter and John as they went and said the, 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 the body was gone and they were still confused. And they went on home. They went on home. They left Jerusalem. They went to back to Emmaus, where apparently they lived. Now this man, I should have said this earlier, this man, Cleopas, many believe, and I think it's probably true, was the same man mentioned in John, I believe it's 1924, 1925. It says that one of the women there at the, at the crucifixion was Mary, the wife, and the name given was Cleophas. Many people believe that's the same name, perhaps uh, uh, John being um, Jewish and, and, and Luke probably being Greek had a different spelling. You say, well, you know, how can that be? Well, you know, Germans say Johann. We, we have the same name, John. Names change sometimes between languages. But they believe it was the same person. So his wife had witnessed the crucifixion. He knew Jesus was dead. He knew all these things. And yet, they were confused. Jesus said they were sad. They were sad as they walked. You would think this would be the happiest day for a disciple of Jesus Christ. But they were sad. Why? Because they didn't believe. They didn't understand. We see the disappointment and the doubt. They, 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 or the disappointment and doubt. It says there in verse 21, they, they had talked about all the things. They said he was a, a, a mighty prophet and he was a, a mighty indeed, mighty in word, word and before God. And all the people knew that he was a mighty prophet and all the deeds he had done. But the chief priest had crucified him, had put him to death, condemned him to death. It says, but we had trusted we had trusted. It's a shame that's in the past tense, isn't it? They put that butt in there. They, they, they mentioned, as a matter of fact, as they go on, they talk about how the women had went to the, the, the grave early, that it was empty, that the two other disciples, that the angels had told them that, they, that, the, that the body was gone. But we had trusted that he was going to be the one to redeem Israel. We believed that he was a prophet, but now we're not sure. We believed in, 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 in his mighty deeds, but, but people had done things. He had been put to death. The rulers opposed him we believed he was mighty in word but my wife had seen him crucified we believed that he was mighty in word before god and before the people we believed all these things but jesus has not changed because of the circumstances. 
Jesus had not changed because of the situation. Jesus had not changed due to what men do. Jesus do not, did not change, does not change. Because of what men think, Jesus doesn't change because of our religious beliefs. Jesus doesn't change because of government decrees. He doesn't change because of our opinions, our expectation, our religion, or anything else. Jesus had a plan. God had a plan. The reason why they were confused, the reason why they were doubting, the reason why they were sad is because they thought he was going to do something that he wasn't about to do. I see this all the time. People get discouraged with God. They get discouraged with Jesus. They get discouraged because their faith is in what? What they believe that God is going to do, and then when God doesn't do it their way, or what they want, or doesn't do it in their time. By the way, Jesus is going to redeem Israel. He just hasn't done it yet. Or at least not fully done it yet. They had a plan. They, 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 they saw what they thought he would do. They thought what he should do. They believed in what he could do. But it didn't happen at the time they wanted or the way they wanted. And now they were discouraged. I've seen people walk away because God didn't do what they expected him to do. They named it, but they didn't claim it. And they walk away. They had left the church in Jerusalem. They were going home confused, doubting, disappointed. We need to let God name it and then claim it. Faith is that God will do what he promised, not what we project. Not in our time, but in his. Not in our way, but his way. The scriptures say that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we get discouraged, we get disappointed, and we, 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 we doubt God. Because he didn't do it our way. It's Yahweh or the highway. Now these men were out on the highway. They were headed away from the church. And back home, back to Emmaus. There was disagreement and debate. We see in verses 14 and 15 as they walked along and they were discussing these things. We get the picture that they, uh, at points, probably their, 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 their discussion, their debate, perhaps became heated. As they talked together, the things that had happened, it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, which means they were discussing this back and forth, Jesus drew near and went with them. You know, we all have our opinions, don't we? We all have a, our way that we think things are. Even in religious matters. There should be no debate. We have the Bible, do we not? But we, we still have many misconceptions. Some of my, 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 my good brothers, we don't necessarily agree. We're not uh, eye to eye on everything. But guess what? We both can't be right. And sometimes we're both wrong. So there were perhaps postulating, trying to think of what happened. All they needed to know what happened is, is go back to what Jesus had been teaching for three and a half years. But their eyes were holding. They were clouded by their own opinions, whether their, their own viewpoints. And they discussed these things and they debated these things and Jesus came along. You'll notice once that Jesus reveals the scriptures to them, there's no more debate. There's no more going back to Emmaus.
They said their, their, their hearts burned when Jesus was with them. My prayer is that Jesus will come alongside us today as we meet here. Every time we meet, as a matter of fact. That our hearts will burn. Not because of the preacher, but because of the preaching of God's word. You'll notice that, that, that and I guess I'm, I'm probably stepping uh, on my conclusion before I get to my conclusion, but you'll notice that as their hearts burned and, and, and they came to the realization, they left Emmaus and they went back to Jerusalem. They went back to the church. They went back to the disciples and they told others what they knew. Sometimes we'll get in a, in a service or we'll be somewhere and our hearts will burn. The, the, something will be going on. Uh, maybe maybe the, through the, the singing of, the, uh, of the, the, the praises to God. Maybe because of the preaching of the word of God. Maybe because of the testimony. Maybe just because of the fellowship uh, with each other and with the Lord. And our hearts will burn. But instead of going out and sharing it, we just go home. They could have said, oh, that was a good discussion. That was a good meal. And then go about our business. I know none of you have ever done that. Where you get stirred up and you stir it up and then uh, it's not long before we just go about our business. Get back to our, our, our regular lives. All the things that they were discussing, they were based on their opinions and the circumstances. But when Jesus presented the word of God, they said their eyes were open, but now they had a clear picture of Jesus. You want a clear picture of Jesus? Don't come here and just expect me alone to give you a clear picture of Jesus. Because I'm going to give you my picture of Jesus. I'm going to give you my view of Jesus. And, and I want my view of Jesus to be a, 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 as perfect as possible. But yet I'm limited. Read the word of God. Read the word of God. You know what's wrong with a lot of churches, a, a lot of services, a lot of things that are going on? Is they don't implore people to read the word of God. They have their sermons. They tell you how great life can be. They, 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 they tell you how to have a positive attitude. They tell you that, that God loves you. And, and they tell you all these things. But you've got some man standing on a podium. If his Bible's open, he's away from it and never refers to it again. Maybe he initially reads a verse. And then he's able to meld it into whatever he wants it to say. Read the word of God yourself. For years I've heard that, that they call Baptists the people of the book. We're not here to spout our opinions. We're not here to, to give you what we think. We're here to study the word of God. I can't give you the entire word of God in an hour or two a week. Read the word of God. And if Brother Duncan says something and you read something, go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Come to me and say, because I want to be, I want a clear picture of Jesus. Once he presented the word. Once he, it says he started uh, from Moses. And, and when it says Moses, it's not talking about the life of Moses. It's talking about the books of Moses, which would be Genesis 1-1. And the prophets. Now, I believe that, that he went all the way through the prophets, which would include the books of uh, poetry and the books of history. In other words, he went through the entire Old Testament. Now, there is enough in, in, in the books of Moses and, and all the prophets to see Jesus, but there is so much. If we read the Old Testament looking for Jesus, they weren't looking for Jesus, were they? 
They were headed home discussing these things. And he started in Genesis and he told them, he told them all about himself, the scriptures concerning himself, he, about the seed of the woman, uh, about the, the, the one that would bruise the head of the serpent, the one who would be lifted up on a pole like the, the, the brazen serpent. And the people were told, look and live. The one that stood between life and death, the bread of life, the water from the rock, the balm of Gilead, the slayer of giants, the champion of Israel, who tore the enemy's gates from off its hinges and carried it away. The lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the bright and morning star, the virgin born, the guiding star, the Passover, Emmanuel, the wonderful one, the counselor, the almighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the one who was despised and rejected, the man of sorrows, the one who was wounded and bruised and chastised, by whose stripes we're healed. The one who was oppressed, afflicted, silent before his accusers. The rider upon the ass that triumphantly rode into Jerusalem. The one who was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. The risen Lord. These are things that are told to us in the Old Testament. And shown us in the New Testament. What happened? Their eyes were open. They suddenly saw Jesus for who he was. And then they went back and they told others. There was a difference in direction. They had started home. They had went and they got close to their home and they said, you need to come and stay with us tonight. When you leave here today, take Jesus home with you. We talk about how uh, the, 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 the book of Revelation says that, that he is in our midst with fiery eyes judging this church. We, we talk about how when two or three are gathered together, he is in our midst. Don't leave him here. Don't leave him here. Joseph and Mary left him in the temple. Do not leave him in the house of God. Take him home with you. You want your heart to burn. Take him home for dinner. We walk out the doors of the church and, and we probably don't get much further in our car and all of a sudden we start thinking about other things. If we make it that far, what are we going to have for supper? What are we going to have for dinner? What are we going to do today? Oh, it's a nice day. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Meditate on Jesus. Think about Jesus. Think about what God is saying to you right now. And keep that with you. Sit down as you eat. Think about Jesus. That will give you the desire to tell others. That will make your heart burn. There was a difference in direction. Their eyes were, were open. Their hearts burned. They went out and told others. And you know what happened? Jesus appeared in their midst and said, Peace be with you. You want to see Jesus? You want to be with Jesus? You want your heart to burn you? You, you want to feel that communion? You want God to bless your life? Listen to the words of Jesus as he speaks to you right now. It is amazing. Sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll be sitting there. At least this is my experience. I'm speaking from experience. You'll be sitting there and you'll be listening to someone preach the word of God. And the preacher may not even say this, but God will put something in your heart and in your mind that's such a blessing.
I was thinking about Danny Holt preaching here a few years ago. And he was preaching on the rich man in hell. And, and somehow I missed the title of his sermon. And, uh, but as he was preaching and as he was sharing this story about how the rich man was in hell and he was speaking to Abraham and he's saying, give me some, some water, just put a, a, a dab of water on uh, Lazarus's finger and let him touch my finger with just a dab of water. Let him go to my brothers and, and tell them about this awful place, about this awful hell. Tell them how to escape this place that they won't come here. He was making all these pleas and Abraham had to deny all of them. He said, no, it can't be. It can't be. There's a great gulf fixed between where we are and where you are. They have the law and the prophets. They have Moses and the prophets to tell them about this place. Even if someone were to return from the dead. Even if someone were to raise after three days. They're not going to believe. If they won't believe the scripture. Because the scriptures tell of him. And as he was sharing that, I, I, I just complete, completely preached another sermon other than what Brother Holt was preaching. But as he was sharing that, the thought occurred to me. He's the beggar now. Lazarus was the beggar in life, but now it is the rich man who is the beggar. And I went and uh, as I posted the video, I titled it because, like I said, I missed his title. Rich Man Begging. And when I spoke to Danny, he said, well, that wasn't the title, but I really like that. And it really made me think a whole lot. And Brother Pearson said, wow, wow, Danny, where did you get that title? That's a great title. I'm going to steal it. And it all came because we were I was listening to the word of God and God was speaking to my heart. Meditate on the things of God. Keep your heart burning after you walk out of here. Some way, some, sometimes to, 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 to keep that fire burning, you've got to tell others. You've got to tell others. And whether their hearts burn too or whether, or, or, or whether they don't, the preaching of the gospel, Jesus is there in the midst. It will change your life and it will change other people's lives. It will change your walk. It will change your outlook. Cleopas and this other disciple knew all the facts. They knew that Jesus was a prophet. They knew he was mighty in word and deed before God and men. Uh, they, they knew he'd been crucified. They knew that the grave was now empty. They knew that, that there were reports from angels that they, that did themselves. I mean, come on. An angel told you. You'd heard Jesus all these years telling you what he was going to do. Yet Jesus... Jesus had to seek them out, had to speak to them personally. Oh, that we would see Jesus. Oh, that we, we would just seek his will. They'd left Jerusalem doubting, discontent, Disturbed. I believe it didn't take them anywhere near the time to get back to Jerusalem as it did as it did to God and Maze. I believe they got back to Jerusalem as quick as they could and they told everybody that they encountered. Jesus is alive. Don't you want your heart burn to burn? Don't 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 you want your Don't you want to be living for a living Savior? That's the big difference. 
in their minds, the, the, the Savior was, was still dead. The body was gone, but they didn't know where the body was. They didn't know what to think. But when you're living for a living Savior, it makes all the difference. Well, when, when, when you realize that this is the living word of God before you, this Bible is alive, it's quick, and it's powerful. It's a two-edged sword. And if things didn't turn out the way we planned, it's because we got gotten our eyes off the Bible. We've gotten our eyes off of Jesus. We can avoid a lot of sadness and a lot of disappointment in our lives. There's still going to be problems. If we just trust the Word of God and believe the Word of God. And the only way of doing that is to know the Word of God. I've had a lot of opinions that, that have been taken away once I studied the Word. We think we know the Word of God because we, we come to, we've come to church for years. I knew somebody that came to church for years and I was teaching him in a class one time and I said Jesus actually became sin for us. And they're, well, I don't think he actually became sin. <laughs> and I showed him the verse. Look, it's in 1 Corinthians. He said, he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin. We get a lot of things wrong. Study the word and your heart will burn. Would you stand?